All right, we're going to talk about approaching and uh, putting a halter on on this horse. And um, one of the things I like to do here at Michigan State University is I, I buy these halters without a lot of snaps and buckles on them. Um, one, I find that they last longer. Two, I like to um, discourage our students from putting the halter on by going over the horse's ears. I know it's a very common way to halter, but um, becomes problematic for us as uh, I have so many students haltering so many horses that the halter is not assigned to a horse. They might be putting a uh, halter that's adjusted too small on a horse and, and pulling it over the ears and causing some, some ear issues. So we'll talk about how we like to halter horses here. So um, just some basic guidelines is you want to make sure you're approaching hopefully at the, at the shoulder of the horse between the head and the shoulder. It, the neck is okay too, but avoiding approaching the horse from directly from behind because the horse can't see you. If you have no choice but to go to the hind quarter of the horse to approach it, making sure that you've said something to this horse, you've recognized that the horse has turned its head and acknowledged that you're there before you actually just get so close that they can go ahead and kick you as that can cause some problems. Problems. So this horse has got her head down. I'm going to walk up. I'm going to kind of just maybe push her over a little bit, get myself in a safer position to halter. Now, when I teach folks to halter, I like to have them approach the left side, take their right hand and go over the horse's neck, grab the crown piece of the halter, and scoop the horse's nose up, and then buckle this halter completely. Okay. Taking this halter, making sure that, again, we look at this facial bone right here, or about two fingers below that, um, and that none of the parts of the halter are overly tight. Now, the reason I like to halter in this manner is that if this horse is wanting to walk away from me, our broodmares are like that, that I actually have a way to control where this horse is going. If I'm catching a horse in a pen and I've got other horses around, that if I need to move the horse out of the way, I've got a way to do that. If I haltered the horse in this manner, I don't have the ability to do that. She could easily duck out of the halter. And then flipping this crown piece over all the time, and you kind of saw that slapped her on the neck, with some horses it's going to be a turnoff and they're not going to want you to catch them. So again, I like to walk up put my hand on their neck, let them know I'm here, take my right hand, reach over the neck, grab the crown piece of the halter, scoop their neck up, and then buckle. I'm, I'm not, um, I don't use the lead rope around their neck very often to catch them, as this now becomes difficult for me, who can hardly chew gum and walk, because now I'm holding the rope around her neck, and then I'm trying to fiddle with the halter. So I like this technique that I just demonstrated to you because I can do this in one smooth type of movement. And it does take a little practice. And the horses here at MSU, many of them will just, once they see the nose band, they'll just kind of scoop their nose right up into it. So it becomes a very safe way to halter.